that the understanding that you need to look after your people uh, has really led to a, a new way uh, for many companies and businesses. It, how, how you tackle informal sector is very complex. I mean, it has to do with institutions that are solid, that are efficient, that there's no corruption, that you have also proper uh, skills in the population. Tom, I mean, your question alludes to the vision for dynamic and inclusive. So yeah. first of all, let me say it's actually everything opposite to static and one-sided. And I think that just open our opens our minds to, uh, you know, all the, 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 the possibilities here. We have to put much more ambition to our policies. Yeah. We want to have dynamic labor markets. We really have to be aware that this ambition is more needed than ever. Welcome to the latest episode of Worldviews on the World of Work. Today is a special edition. We're going to be focusing on the road to recovery and specifically on the joint recommendations from the International Organization of Employers, uh, which represents employer organizations in 150 countries and the World Employment Confederation, which is, of course, the voice of the global employment services sector. And leading the way for us down this road uh, to recovery uh, today, two uh, fantastic guests. We have Bettina Schaller, who is the president of the World Employment Confederation, and Roberto Suarez Santos, who is the secretary general of the International Organization of Employers. So let's take it from the top, and let's imagine that the IOE WEC report is a pop album or a rock album. And I'm going to ask you, what would be your two or three favorite tracks on the album? What are your highlights? And Bettina, let's start with you. Get us into the groove, Bettina. Well, thanks for the question, Tom. First of all, I'm absolutely delighted, you know, that we've uh, put together these recommendations in these times where we're trying to make sense of the complexity of what is going around. We're trying to understand what the direction is and, and indeed, you know, what recipes we should be taking. Uh, this is a, an absolutely um, crucial piece, we believe. Now, it's, it's, it's quite rich for those who want to look at it. And the piece that um, I think sticks out most uh, in, in my sense and has the most uh, uh, interest is uh, the direction it gives, notably around the topic of uh, skills uh, and employability. And we know that one of the elements in this crisis is around, okay, you know, do I still have the right skills as a, as a person, as a worker, but also from the business perspective? What is it that I need not only to get out of the crisis, uh, the recovery and to build better, but also with the new requirements? And the other piece is really, well, uh, the world doesn't look the same as it did before. There's new ways of working. So what does it mean for me? And what expectations can I have on the framework that I uh, operate in as a business, as a worker? Uh, what is it that, um, what support will I be getting from that side? That, that, that's great, Bettina. And Roberto, over to you. What, what are some of your highlights from the report, just to set the scene as a starter? First of all, they need to act urgently. I mean, that's that's really, there's no time to lose. I mean, that's that's... That's something that we cannot say higher and we, can, we cannot say lower. Uh, the second thing, the second element is we need to add, uh, act jointly. Meaning by that, meaning by that partnerships. Partnerships, Bettina was referring to skills with the educational system, with the employment services, with um, we know on social protection, but on other areas where the private sector can make a huge difference. We saw it in the health system, if we act jointly and effectively. And the third element is ambition. We have to put much more ambition to our policies. Yeah. If we want to have dynamic labor markets, we really have to be aware that this ambition is more needed than ever. Thank you for that. And the mood music is definitely set. And as well as giving a flavor some of the content, I think what we've heard there uh, highlights why this report matters so much. The crisis has changed how we work, where we work, but is it also a game change in terms of perceptions of diverse forms of work, including temporary and contract work? Bettina. 
You've alluded to uh, the term of diverse forms of work, Tom, and that is, of course, an absolutely key one for us. And it's one that you will uh, find in the joint recommendations as well. Now, maybe for those of you out there who, you know, are not quite sure what this is about. Well, it's really about at the end of the day, what do companies need in terms of talent? What do businesses need? They need to access um, a, a workforce that, um, you know, may come from not only different countries, different backgrounds, different skill sets as it is, but a workforce that is also under different and has different forms of working. And what is absolutely key is to provide the businesses with, again, the frameworks that allow them to tap into uh, these different um, forms uh, of contract that are out there for them to do that. But important for us is also the perspective of the worker uh, herself or himself, who, you know, not everybody is going to be employed. And so you need to give people an opportunity to, again, not only access the labor market, but be in that labor market with whatever form of contract. And there needs to be a level playing field on those forms mm. of contract. And therefore, that's uh, that's where those diverse forms of work come in. Yes, and, and that's a, a, a great point, uh, Bettina. Roberta, coming to you on this, maybe slightly broadening the question is, is obviously one of the challenges for businesses is about remote working, how you manage it. What do you see as the role of, of the IOE, but also of, of, of the employee organisations you represent in making sure that this happens and works for the individuals, but also works for the business as well? Because that's a big topic, isn't it? Okay, let me let me, if I may, Tom, also yes. refer to the to the previous question, which I find also quite interesting and linked to the role of employers' organization, which is yes. how things are working. Um, I mean, we have been discussing that in many forums, also with WEC, on how you know the concept of working time, the concept of working place, is was changing. And so, what's our role as employers' organization? We keep not just saying, but also advocating among our memberships, you need to lead with the example. You will never be able to provide a good service to our members, to your members, or to bring more membership, or to preserve your membership if you, not, you do not digest what digitalization means for your organization. If you do not, you are not aware that, that these new uh, realities need new answers. And also, uh, it's a contradictory, a contradictory um, trend. On one side, what we see is, yes, we, we, we are now in a situation politically very, very complex, which perhaps more nationalism, protectionism, and even populism. But at the same time, the reality is becoming more and more global. Um, the, the, the fact is that more and more you can find services provided digitally, which are cross-bordering, um, uh, which are cross border. So, and, and on that also, our employees organizations need to be up to the expectations. So, these are critical areas where we have been working also intensively, also with the ILO, but also with other stakeholders on how we can position many of our organizations, not just in developed countries, but also in developing countries to be, to be much more focused on services. If I may, Tom, because this is such a great point that you've made, uh, Roberto. Um, and I think one of the readings that we have in, in uh, you know, with our lens on, on the world of work is that actually so many businesses, so many employers have stepped it up during the crisis. That the understanding that you need to look after your people uh, has really led to a, a new way uh, for many companies and businesses. There's no way we can go back to how things were before. And if there's one of the good things that um, we've now seen in this crisis, it's exactly that point. It's the role that, that business plays and the readiness that it has to uh, to step up uh, and to be uh, sitting at the table and to be obviously also co-shaping uh, those questions that are linked to how um, it uh, it can access talent and, and make sure that it has the right talent, which is uh, one of the angles, of course, we're looking at today. So let's stay with that theme about the role of business in society. And when we look back, on the crisis, do you think it would be the case that re the reputation of, of business will have come through this enhanced? Uh, inevitably, there will be uh, scrutiny. So really interested in your views on that, Roberto. 
this idea of having a sense of responsibility, whatever you call it, business, responsible business conduct, CSR, uh, preserving human rights, due diligence, that's coming with huge strength. And the, the positive role of business to need to be strengthened. And in fact, in IOA, we are going to undertake some important actions to better communicate what does it mean to set up a business? What does it mean to struggle, not just in developed economies, but also in developing economies? Also, when you have a huge informal sector, how difficult that is. But at the same time, and that's your point, Tom, we need to be credible. And this credibility means also be closely linked to our principles and values. We cannot accept situations like uh, child labor, forced labor, non-discrimination, preserving freedom of association. Those are areas in which we have to be clear. And this idea of responsibility should be in our own genes as employers and business organizations. So there is there are expectations also on, on the angle of sustainability, sustainability for the planet, but sustainability for, you know, for, for, for the way we operate will come with high strength, I would say. So, and, and we have to be up to, to the expectations. We are working on that. Yes, and that's a great point. Businesses have stepped up during the health crisis, but we'll need to continue stepping up in the future, particularly with regards to sustainability. As we look ahead at rebooting national economies, national jobs markets, what are some of the big pieces of the jigsaw that we need to really focus on? Uh, Bettina. Well, first of all, Tom, I have to just picking up the, the previous question, make a point of how I uh, proud I am actually of uh, the businesses in specifically the private employment services sector, uh, because they have stepped up to uh, the responsibility p piece around that. But otherwise, of course, uh, as, as Roberto says, this is going to be one of the big pieces coming coming out of it. It's been absolutely key to look at uh, transitions, as we call it. Um, transitions, well, first of all, you know, between the sectors that have been doing well and those that have been struggling, just to ensure that obviously there's a demand and supply element here. But there's also an element of, uh, again, uh, um, responding to to business needs, of course, to, to, to workers' needs, ensuring that there's a smooth functioning uh, of the labour market. And of course, this is where experts like uh, private employment services uh, come uh, into the picture there. Thanks, Bettina. And spot on, big role there for the private employment services sector, for sure. Roberta, what's your take? If we want also to recover quickly from a social and economic perspective, sorry to say, but we need mobility in a cautious manner, Mobility within the labor markets, mobility cross-border, mobility. And that needs an investment in the very, very short term, an investment that has to be done worldwide. Of course, also, we are going to have huge problems of access to finance. We are going to have in-depth economies. So we'll have to find ways in, we, in which we preserve also this uh, financial access, especially for middle and small companies, but also to large companies to be put. But that's that's also a, a short term push that we need to we need to be. In the middle and long term, of course of course it, it will depend on countries. But again, uh, the practical the practical measures that we need to be putting into place have to do with the way we embrace we 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 the future and the uh, on our present, which has to do with the digital reality. And uh, we'll talk also perhaps about informality, but if we really want dynamic labor market. See, we really want to, to have a, a, a different situation in terms of sustainability. The structural reforms that had to do with infrastructure for digital access to labor markets, also the infrastructure to have access to new opportunities for individuals in terms of having providing services to have with also new incomes, that's critical. Regulations are not up to the expectations. And uh, I'm not just talking about labor regulations, which in many countries are very rigid, but also uh, regulations to set up business, also to set up startups. That's far away from optimal in too many countries. Uh, and there we are also identifying with some of our constituents what can be done jointly and with the governments to have a better scenario. So one area that the joint IOE WEC recommendations really focus on is the informal economy. Now we have been talking about this for quite a few years. What gives you the confidence that now is the time to really make change happen? And Bettina, let's start with you on this one. 
informality is definitely the, 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 the biggest challenge out there, no doubt about it. And this crisis has more than ever shown how yeah. crucial labor market policy and labor market framework are for an economy. It, we need to create the, the conditions for those workers to obviously enter the formal sector. And it's about incentivizing, yes, um, and the same on, on the side of, of businesses, you know, and I alluded to that earlier. If we focus on this framework of diverse forms of work and of um, creating um, a, enough um, opportunities for people to enter via different uh, ways of working, then we will also be on the right path to, uh, to address this informality issue. In many developing economies, the informal sector goes up to 80%, 85%. There's no decent work. There's no uh, sustainable model in the informal sector. If you look at the past, if you look at the recent decades, it's true that informality has been decreasing. So it's just uh, also be clear, there's, it's not that there is no progress, but the, the rhythm of this progress is very slow. You will never be able to, to have a different scenario if we do not, again, put ambition here. And uh, in IOE, we have been insisting very strongly on that. It, how, how you tackle the informal sector is very complex. I mean, it has to do with institutions, that are solid, that are efficient, that there's no corruption, that you have also proper uh, skills in the population, that you have also regulation that is adaptable. So that's, there's no magic formula. But if there's a new element, and, and we have to apply our innovation mind here, is again, we underestimate also the capacity of the, of the new realities, the digital realities. Uh, I give you very in consideration that um, most not, and a, a great majority of people in the informal sector have mobile phones, for instance. You can find ways in which you bring these new realities to the formal sector in an intelligent manner, I would say, because it's not to go from one day to the other. And that applies to, to other areas. I mean, like social protection schemes, uh, like uh, entrepreneurship. We need to find ways in which you really incentivize, you give a kind of proper stimulus to those individuals that do not find a sufficient attraction to come to the formal sector. So let's end this podcast by looking ahead. And I'm going to ask you both uh, this question. What is your vision for a post-pandemic uh, economy and jobs market? And Roberto, let's start with you. A dynamic labor market. In an, it's a labor market in which me, as an individual, I have the not the certainty, but the, the feeling of security based on opportunity. It's not so much on having uh, regulations that uh, protect me as an individual, which are important, but more with the idea of how many opportunities I will have if I decide on a given moment to leave my job and to do something different. A healthy labor market. It's a, mar a labor market in which I can change from a job to the other or from an opportunity to another in a fluent manner. And that's what we should be aiming at jointly, not just the employers, but also with the workers' community, with the governments, that the other stakeholders. Thanks for that, Roberto. And Bettina, over to you. What is your vision for post-pandemic economies and jobs markets? Open our minds. Tom, I mean, your question alludes to the vision for dynamic and inclusive. So yeah. first of all, let me say it's actually everything opposite to static and one-sided. And I think that just open our opens our minds to, uh, you know, all the, 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 the possibilities here. Uh, Roberto, of course, alluded to uh, the necessity of, of security. Um, I mean, clearly for us, uh, that labor market needs to be and provide the right mix of security and flexibility. And that needs to be done for both uh, workers, but uh, but also for for businesses. But look, what what is the vision? It's really a vision of um, of participation and a vision of a labor market that uh, provides the the conditions, as we just been discussing around uh, about the conditions for diverse forms of work. But obviously, you know, it it may sound obvious the conditions for for doing business, the conditions for collaboration. So. It's one where we embrace um, uh, the, the opportunities and one where we uh, make sure that we get everybody involved and, of course, the experts uh, sitting at the table as well. 
And of course, I have to say it as a last word, uh, a few words of appreciation as well to uh, to the IOE and to Roberto for these joint recommendations. We are convinced that they are going to be an important element of, of the work that we all have ahead of us as we look to uh, build this better world of work. Fantastic. And thank you, Bettina and Roberto. So many really strong messages to come out of the discussions. I like the focus on skills, employability, opportunity, and the fact that diverse forms of work can be one of the sources of these opportunities uh, going forward. A focus on the role of employer organisations and the fact that you're there to help member businesses adapt to a fast-changing world of work, in particular around new working patterns. Some messages to national governments, uh, in particular the real commitment uh, from the HR services sector and the wider business community to help address the long-standing challenges around uh, the informal economy. Uh, Businesses have stepped up during the crisis. That was a clear message uh, that has come out. And and there's a huge role, isn't there, going forward for the IOE, but also for WEC in terms of showcasing some of these positive contributions, so dialing up the good. I think what we've heard in the last 20 so minutes is some real practical suggestions based on the report. And that report not only puts forward practical suggestions, but also I think sets a tone. And the tone we've heard uh, from the discussions today is one of positivity. Uh, It's one of urgency, Uh, Roberta mentioned that. It's one of ambition uh, and also one of collaboration. And I think the work that the IOE and the WEC are doing together is a great example of that. My name is Tom Hadley. It's been a real pleasure to facilitate the discussions uh, today. Uh, Thank you all for listening to this special edition of the World Views on the World of Work podcast. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Be sure to visit www.wakeglobal.org to access the other episodes and also our blog post, The Notes on the New Normal, for further insights. Until next time.